I served with the 12th Evacuation Hospital in Kuchi, Vietnam in 1968. I was the head nurse on the orthopedic and amputee ward. I wanted to be a nurse my whole life, and my mom said, okay, um, first you have to be a nursing assistant to see if you can deal with it, because she was a nurse too, and I could, and so I went to nursing school. And then an Army recruiter came in 1965, and they were going to all the nursing schools because they just needed nurses. And they offered to pay for your last year in nursing school, if, and then you would owe them two years of active duty. It was called the Army Student Nurse Program. We work 12-hour days, seven days a week. So you either work 12A to 12P or 12P to 12A. Uh, you would go to work. Our mission at our particular hospital was to stabilize and treat the guys and get them out in three days. To Japan is where most of ours went because the 12th evac, and I didn't really know this until I got back, it was the busiest hospital in Vietnam at that time because of its location along the Cambodian border. So we were constantly turning our beds over, and so our goal was just to get them ready to leave. Most of us were pretty green nurses when we went over, and so the challenge was learning to do things that you normally wouldn't have learned that soon as a nurse. So you, you, it was the best team I ever worked on because your, your corpsman, your ward master, your other nurses, everyone worked together. And if you were the new guy, they helped you, period. I remember a young boy, he was a farm boy, and I'm from Iowa, so I you know, knew about farm boys, and he had lost his arm. And one night, he, was, he just, he was crying, and I'm like, what's the matter? He said, I don't think my girlfriend will love me when I go back without an arm. The other one was a captain who lost his leg, and he was the only one that survived the battle. And so he lost all of his men, and he just kept saying, why am I here? Why am I here? They're all dead. And the thing about those two is that we never knew what happened to them. You know, did the girlfriend like him? That was always a question. And the other one was a, kind of, turns out to be a funny story because we were in Quonset huts and there was sandbags halfway up to prevent from shrapnel. And if you had incoming, what we did is we got as many patients as we could out of their beds, under them on the cement floor. We had one patient who was in a full body cast. And incoming, we got the you know sirens and everything and, and got the guys under the bed and he's like, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, I want to get under the bed. And I'm like, we can't get you under the bed. You're in a full body cast. I will cover you with flak jackets from your head to your toe and I'll stay with you. And he's like, no, Lieutenant, I want to get under the bed. And so he started rocking like this and I hollered at my ward master and I said, get over here. He's going to throw himself out. So adrenaline works. We got him under the bed. I have no memory of putting him back, but I have met him. I'm a fortunate nurse. I've met three of the guys I took care of. This guy ended up being a, a gen, major general. I got so I was put in touch with him. It's a long story, but I called the phone number and it was his wife. And I said, "Hi, my name is Grace Moore." And she goes, "Oh my gosh, my husband is waiting to hear from you." And so he gets on the phone. He goes, "This is General," and his name. I said, are you the young man that tried to do a face plant on my cement floor in 1968? He goes, yes, ma'am, that was me. <laughs> so that's my funny story. You know, it wasn't all bad. There are good memories. Vietnam veterans do have good memories. The memorial to me is a peaceful healing place. And I was the Pennsylvania State Coordinator, so I helped to get it here. It was a lot of hard work. When you go to look at the memorial, you need to do this. If you look face on, there's the three figures are touching in some way. If you go to the back of the memorial, that woman hunkered down is by herself. No one's touching her. And that's how we felt sometimes over there, alone. Even amongst people, we felt alone. And then you need to get down on your knees and look up under her boonie hat and look at her face. It's powerful. It's a powerful memorial.